So the challenge is actually his, not mine. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the Rotary Club for having me here. I feel very honored and I'm very humbled to have such a great panelist with me. They're all doctors and I'm the only non-doctor. So thank you for having me amongst you all. It's an honor to be here. Okay, Rotarians, how are you all doing? I see some of you all feeling a bit sleepy after lunch. So when I came in, I asked them that um, I'd like to go and look at the lunch buffet. And they were like, oh, you're hungry, you want to eat? I'm like, no, thank you, I've eaten lunch, but I just want to go look at what people who are going to be listening to me are eating so that I can gauge what their uh, activity energy level is. And I see that though the talk is so interesting, some of you are just dozing off because you can't help it. When you eat, the maximum blood supply goes to your stomach for digestion. And when you eat a very heavy meal, like uh, the fish and the lasagna and dal dansak and uh, gulab jamuns, chocolate cigars, all the more the blood is going to your stomach and even when you want to keep your eyes open, you can't help but close them for a little five seconds. So I would like to request all of you to stand up with me through my presentation. And I'm not joking, I'm serious. Why should we be the only ones standing, the presenters? You guys have to join us because at least when you're joining us, the blood is moving away from your stomach into other parts of your body, right? While you're standing, it's okay to fidget a little bit and to move your legs a little bit because that is when activity is happening in your body and you are burning some energy, right? The same way, I would like to tell people who do conference calls in offices, uh, doctor spoke about people who sit behind the desk, but I'm sure all of you all at some point in your day have conference calls or you know, you're, you're doing some really important one hour, half an hour, 10 minute call, get up and walk. I'm sure you'll have cabins or mobile phones. They're mobile, you can walk with them while you talk. And you burn some energy while you are at work. I'm gonna put, throw out a lot of information at you today, but there are five things that I want you to take back with you. And we'll discuss them at the end of my talk. Fine, so since we're all standing, let's just move side to side. I see some people still standing with pockets, hands in the pockets, my husband being one of them, so I would request everyone to just move side to side. You can move your hands with them, there's no use holding them together. They're not gonna fall off. There, you're just burning some kind of energy. Okay, while you're doing that, stay stationary. Put your hands out to the side, bend them so you don't hit your partner, and just twist side to side. Or you can have your hands down. So you're just rotating your spine, moving your, mobilizing your spine, warming up your spine by moving. So we've warmed up our legs by moving a little bit, we've warmed up our spine by moving a little bit, and our arms. That's all you need to do at least a few times in your day if you have a very, very sedentary lifestyle. Move. It's very important for human beings to move. Dr. Vishal said something about the cavemen. Why were they so healthy? Because they had to go out, catch their own food, cook their own food and eat. We have servants in the house, they go to the market, they come back, they cook our meal, we sit at our tables, we eat our meal, we snooze a little or we go back to work on a sedentary desk. We are not moving. When we get down from our buildings and our houses, there are our cars with our drivers or self-driven. We get into our car, go to our destination, park closest to where we have to go, so that we don't have to walk that distance. I agree that Bombay's temperature is not great for walking. But still, a little bit of movement. You live on the fifth floor, you don't have any time to exercise, use the stairs. 
Walking upstairs never hurt anybody, except people with knee problem, which is a vicious cycle. When there's no activity or overactivity, you develop problems. I see some people getting tired of standing. So am I. Shall I sit? Then you can sit. <laughs> I guess not. It's good to stand. Move. If you're getting tired, just move around. Okay, so move. It's really important to move. Make simple lifestyle cho choices. Just because I've asked you to stand doesn't mean you'll talk to each other and not listen to me. Okay. Um, I'm not going to ask you to sit, so don't look at me so expectantly. I'm going to continue my talk and show you a few simple exercises that you can do at your desk. Would you like to see a few exercises that you can do at your desk? Okay, so all of you have a chair behind you, right? Stand touching your chair with your feet. Take your feet directly under your hip bones. These are your hip bones. Now walk one step away, half a step away from your chair. Make sure that the seat of the chair is directly behind you. Okay? Sit back to your chair and stand up. <laughs> Push your butt back. Touch the chair and stand up. Push your butt back. Touch the chair and stand up. If you feel you're not reaching the chair, you can go back a little bit. He's trying. I didn't say you have to touch it, I said try to touch your chair. Touch your chair and come back. <coughs> touch your chair and come back. Okay? This very simple exercise is called the squat. All of you have chairs? No? All of you have chairs? Okay, this is an exercise you can do. 10 repetitions at least five times a day. The next thing you do with your chair, you sit on it. Ah. Uh, he said. Yeah. Now, I'm not done. Save your claps for later. If you still feel like clapping for me after my talk, put your hands next to your butt with your fingers down, okay, like you're holding the edge of your chair. Now, lift your butt off the chair. If you need to move your legs forward, do that. Bend your elbows, let your back go down and up, and down and up. Dr. Vishal, you're not going to join me. And down. And up. Great. That worked which muscle? Tricep. Tricep. Triceps. Yes, that was your tricep muscle. Great. Simple exercise, right? The next one. Up, everybody, please. So this is not for the people in the front row. <coughs> you can just watch us. But the people who go behind the chair, so everyone who has a chair in front of them, put your hand on the chair, move your legs back a little, and just go down and up. 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 Which muscle? Chest. Your chest muscle, exactly. So you've worked your legs. You've worked your arms and you've worked your chest just by three very simple exercises that you can do with your chair, which I'm sure each one of you possesses, right? And this contrib contributes to strength training as well. So movement is something, okay, which is like a bit cardiovascular. You can take it to greater heights by, uh, you know, going for walking or cycling or swimming, with, play a sport. That's your cardiovascular a little bit of strength training and I'd like to show you something which is great for strength training. I have two of my uh, trainers with me today. 
a great tool for strength training for people who don't have the time to go outside and strength training is really really important i'm not going i'm not saying go to the gym and pick up a 20 kg dumbbell and you know start pumping iron but i'm just saying some kind of strength training that you need to do this these are two very simple rollers which we can show you later what to do with it but these are therabands which you can just stand on Work your biceps. You get these at Reebok. They're not very expensive. Work your shoulders. And work your triceps. Great. Besides this, I think Dr. Vishal was talking about food. And my mantra about food is eat smart. All of you went to the buffet and it was like a seafood diet, right? When you see a buffet, it's a seafood diet. I don't mean eat only seafood. I, see, I mean everyone eats what they see. See food, eat the food that you see, right? So the buffet is there to cater to different people. Some people are vegetarian, some people eat fish, some people eat chicken. Choose what you want to eat. Do not eat everything. It's not your last meal of your life. You are going to get food again. Be smart. And how many of you are smart? How many of you are smart? Everyone. everyone. And how many people ate smartly today? Oh, was it the seafood smart diet? The last point that I'd like to make today is about diseases with exercise you exercise and you keep the doctors away <laughs> almost <laughs> sorry bad panel to say this on but yeah exercise i have a person very dear to me who has cancer and he goes through his chemo really down uh, five seven days are really bad can't get out of bed on the eighth day he comes to the gym and he works out and he works out five days a week and that is what brings me to my last point is your attitude it's all about attitude if you have a positive attitude you can beat any disease in the world but you need to be positive and you need to know that it's a disease and you and you alone can overcome it with confidence. My five points for you to take home very quickly. Move. It's very important for us to move. We are human beings who are not meant to be in chairs all day. We're supposed to move. We're also animals. Uh, my second point is lift. Strength train. Any kind of strength training, there are lots of options. Drink lots of water, fluids, hydrate yourself constantly. Some of us don't even like the taste of water, but it's very important to drink hydration. Eat smart. Like you all said, you all are smart, but honestly, I didn't see anyone eating smart today. And my last point, attitude. It's all in the attitude. And for all of you, I pray that you're positive. And the motto of my gym, is be fit because you deserve it. Be fit because you deserve it. Thank you very much for having me.